It's the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, and we are back. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to another live edition of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by 90 Min. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simiu, and um, a little bit of a different type of podcast today because obviously um, today marks the 20th anniversary of the death of an Arsenal hero, uh, David Rowcastle. And of course, yesterday we got the really, really sad news that Claude, a uh, regular contributor, over on AFTV for years and years and years, was was doing his own channel and his own thing um, at the end, but he sadly passed away. And, um, you know, I, I knew Claude. Um, I'm not going to sit there and pretend that we were closer friends than we actually were because I, I, I can't stand when people do that. Um, I can't stand when somebody passes away and all these people come out of the woodwork and, and almost exaggerate the, the, the friendship or the relationship that they had. We did know each other. Um, we did meet on, on many occasions. We did do some work together. Um, for those of you who listened to this podcast when it first started, prior to it even being on YouTube, uh, Claude was uh, a, a regular. Claude came on four or five times, yeah, at least in the first sort of 10, 15 episodes of the show and helped massively in terms of getting it off the ground, in terms of using this profile uh, to get more eyes on the show. And, and I'll forever be grateful for that. Um, always very humble, um, always willing to help. Um, but we'll come on to talk a little bit more about Claude in a moment, uh, because I, I definitely think it's worthwhile. I want to start off by talking about uh, David Rowcastle, uh, former Arsenal man, absolute legend. Um, I don't actually remember David Rowcastle playing for Arsenal. But you only need to to listen to those who who knew him, who played with him, um, those who supported him, those who watched Arsenal week in, week out in those days to understand what an incredible impact he had on people at this football club, how much he was loved, how much he was adored, what a talented footballer he was, um, what a character he was. Um, you know, that famous old quote, remember who you are, what you are and who you represent um, displayed up at the Emirates Stadium now and, and and you know, will be for years to come because it's a really powerful quote. Um, and yeah, I wanted to pay tribute to David Rowcastle. And I know there'll be people out there who are far better placed than me, um, you know, to comment on exactly what David Rowcastle was like as a player, exactly what impact he had at Arsenal, exactly how he'll be remembered. Because as I say, it was a little bit before my time. Um, but that doesn't mean, particularly as somebody who who's followed Arsenal for pretty much my entire life, as somebody who um, adores Arsenal and as somebody who now covers the Arsenal as closely as I do, it, it's impossible to you know, to ignore the significance of, of David Rowcastle, sadly lost his life uh, 20 odd years ago, 20 years exactly, um, 31st of March, 2001. And it's hard to believe that it's been 20 years because I remember hearing about it. Um, and I remember when the news broke and obviously I've been at the Emirates on many, many occasions when the crowd have come together uh, to pay tribute to Rocky and, um, yeah, as I say, look, there will be people out there who are far better placed, far more educated when it comes to Rocky Rowcastle, what he stood for, what he played like, and and how much of a significance he had back when he was playing for the club. But it would be wrong of me not to acknowledge uh, that this is the 20th anniversary of the death of an Arsenal hero, an Arsenal legend, and somebody who was unfortunately taken uh, far too young. So I want to pay tribute to Rocky. Um, and um, as I can see in the comments, there are lots of you doing the same, um, you know, and, and and rightly so. 
going back to the subject of of Claude and um you know we heard the news yesterday that he had sadly passed away and from what I understand he'd been found the night before and and obviously they wanted to make sure that the family knew about it and stuff and and that makes perfect sense that's absolutely the right way um of going about things and and they need to hear the news they need to process the news before it becomes a public thing but inevitably when you're talking about someone who was as well known who became as famous as Claude um you know it wasn't going to be long before the, the the story went around and you've seen tributes coming in from so many people and you know AFTV as a platform as a channel is a very divisive thing you know I, i've contributed to it um and you know i even if just briefly even if just uh on a couple of occasions have felt the wrath of uh some of those fans or supporters uh that want to challenge you and that want to go up against your opinion when you voice it on a platform that big you know you can only imagine how difficult it must be for the guys that are on there week in week out yeah of course there are benefits to it um and i will go as far as saying that there are still some contributors on that channel in my opinion and this is my personal opinion and people might not like this but there are still some people on there who act up who play up who probably exaggerate opinions who probably overreact to certain situations in order to continue building this character building this um this profile but in Claude's case as someone who knew him and again you know there are people who knew him far better than i did but from what i knew of him um that was genuine you know claude lost his shit sometimes on aftv but it was genuine uh, because he was genuinely upset genuinely disappointed uh, by what he'd seen from this football club this football club was was his life and you know i've already put a tweet out i i posted on instagram yesterday because you know i think it's it's a really sad story and it's one that felt like a kick in the balls to me because me personally the last chat I had with Claude was after we had a little bit of a disagreement about Mikel Arteta it wasn't personal it wasn't um it wasn't malicious it wasn't uh anything like that it was literally um a disagreement about Mikel Arteta and where he's taking the club and I feel that he's taking the club in the right direction and and Claude didn't feel the same and and you know we had a little bit of a back and forth about that but views exchanged completely respectfully and um there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with people having different views there's nothing wrong with have with people having different opinions but for some reason nowadays in 2021 you need to either be one extreme or the other and if you're on the opposite side to someone else there's this culture whereby people start to abuse start to criticize start to get personal that's the thing right and i'm not going to speculate about claude's death or or about how it happened or anything like that because i think that's completely wrong to do we don't know um it's up to the family if people will find out um you know if indeed it it you know it was something to do with with feeling really down and stuff you know you it, that that makes it even worse for me um because people could have people could have been nicer um and not just to claude right this is a this is a problem all across the board and how many people do we have to lose to depression and 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 Claude was very open about that and he spoke about it time and time again he spoke about how depressed he would get and and he's not the only one he's one of the brave ones that spoke out about it lots of people don't lots of people don't have that courage that he showed to do that he did and um and regardless of whether his death was was anything to do with that and again as i say i'm not going to speculate on what may not or may have happened it's an eye opener again this is somebody who who suffered from depression um partly due to the 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 way people treated him online and why do we do that why do we do that to people and and graham brooks put out a tweet yesterday graham from same old arsenal also uh contributed on aftv as well he said it spot on you know why do we have to be ni- why are we nice to people once they pass away Surely it's better to share all those positives 
with them whilst they're alive. And, I, and, and that's exactly right. That's exactly right. You know, whatever you think of AFTV, whatever you thought of Claude's opinions, you cannot, um, there is no justification for being personal, for attacking people. And I just, you know, I, I just, I, I hate that, you know, this abuse has become a norm. And it has, you know, in 2021, abuse has become normal online and it's, 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 it's bang out of order. Um, you've seen famous television personalities uh, suffer from depression off the back of it. You've seen endless celebrities, um, you know, suffer from being in the public eye. And and me personally, I just, I just think something needs to be done to stop it. And I think as people as well, you know, we can talk about what the social media platforms should do. And I, and I think that they should do more. I think, and I've said this before on, on this channel, I think that you should have to put ID in. I think that you should have to verify yourself, um, you know, when, when signing up to these platforms so that not so that the public can see your information, but so that in the case where you're abusing someone and you're going around and saying whatever you want and, you know, crossing the lines, you know, you should be able to be identified at least by the authorities. And I, I've said that time and time again, but ultimately, right, we can sit here and we can bang on about what the platforms should do, what Facebook should do, what Twitter should do, what Instagram should do what YouTube should do. But the reality is I think we as people have got a responsibility to sort this the fuck out. Um, you know, you see it, call it out. Um, you see it, report it. it. It has to, you know, as people, we've got to take responsibility of it as well, because we might not have all done it. You know, I like to think that I haven't gone on social media and, abused someone I might have disagreed with certain opinions and I might have responded to them and what I will say I've done and I will admit I've done is I've responded badly to abuse that's come my way and maybe I shouldn't have I should have just got on with it but it, it when it happens to you on a daily basis and I'm not for a second claiming that I'm as high profile as Claude was or that I will ever be that high profile or in the public domain as much as he was but um I have been on the receiving end of it and it's difficult to just ignore it. So if you ima imagine getting this on a daily basis on a much bigger scale. So I just think as people, we've got a, we've got a responsibility to stop it happening. We've got a responsibility um, to call it out when it does happen, when we see it and almost kind of like police ourselves when it comes to it. You know, you're not talking about putting yourself in a dangerous position. It's not disarming a criminal holding a gun whereby you might be a little bit hesitant about taking the risk. No, this is literally calling someone out online, highlighting, um, you know, an issue that is is so, so prevalent right now. And um, yeah, you know, I, I, I will going forward when I see it, I will call it out. Um, I've been guilty of seeing it and ignoring it in the past and, and that's wrong. Um, but that's the only way this is going to stop. And, you know, social media has got some really good points. You know, I've made friends via social media that I probably never would have made, um, if the platform wasn't available, I probably owe my job now to social media because how would I've got my work out in the public domain? How would I have been able to communicate with people? How would I've grown a podcast, um, without being able to to do that via social media. So it is powerful. It does have its benefits, but now it's gotten to the point where it's so powerful, so big that the, the measures that were in place and were right, at, or at least, um, you know, suitable or, or substantial at the be enough at the beginning are no longer that they now need adjusted. Things need to be looked at again. It's become a much bigger part of life nowadays. And the more people get involved, the more idiots get involved, uh, because that's just the way it goes. And now we need to find a way of, um, of policing it a little bit better. I do think that the main responsibility, as I've said, lies with those platforms, but ultimately we, as people have got to take responsibility as well. And, you know, when I think about it, the amount of times I've gone to write a tweet and before I've hit the send button, I've reread it and gone. I don't mean any offense by this or I don't mean um, 
to be this way, but reading it back, just taking a pause and thinking about it, I can understand why it could affect someone or why it might be taken in a certain way. And I will delete that tweet. And and so many times I'll write something and then I won't even send it. Sometimes I'll write it, I'll go back over it, I'll change it because I don't think, um, you know, I don't think it um, it is suitable. But the amount of tweets I've written out and never sent because I just, I, I wondered about how that would impact someone. You know, if somebody's got their own shit going on, if somebody's got their own issues, if somebody's struggling because of something, we have no idea about it. How do you know what impact your words will have? You don't. So why even, why even go down the route that could potentially upset someone? You have no, uh, you, you have no idea how much of an impact those words that you think might be trivial at times, or you think might be um, just day-to-day -day talk. Um, you have no idea how, um, you know, how they'll be taken by someone else. And that's, that's, that's my view on it. And I think it's all got to stop and people need to take responsibility as well as the platforms doing something about it. I mean, if I posted a video on Facebook, right? If I posted a music video on Facebook, within two minutes, I'll get a notification saying it's been it's been muted because it's broken copyright. So if they've got that capability of monitoring every single post, literally within minutes of it going up, why can't they do the thing? Why can't they do the same thing with abuse? You know, they can. Um, but it's the, one of the big appeals of social media is that there is freedom of speech. Um, and... Um, as one of our listeners, uh, Nasunai says, 20, 30 years ago, freedom of speech sounded like a good thing. Now it's gone too far. There has to be a limit. Yeah, uh, I, I I agree with the sentiment there. I, I'm not saying that I want to take away freedom of speech. Um, but I want to be, I want people to clamp down more on abuse because particularly now, man, during this pandemic where there are a lot of people who's who probably never thought they'd have mental health issues are now having them as a consequence of the way the world has become and the way everything's been for the last year or so. You don't know what an impact that's going to have on someone. And um, yeah, it, it, it's got to be dealt with. It's, it's, it's a real, real problem. Uh, Matt Beaumont says, Harry, do you think AFTV maybe should have had more support there for Claude after they stopped him from appearing on the channel? <sighs> Look, I've, I've seen tweets i've seen messages i've seen this i've seen that talking about how aftv are to blame um for for claude's ill health and and look I, I don't think you can say that i don't think you can pin that on anybody i think it's i think it's very unfair i think the only people you can pin it on are those who felt the need to abuse him all the time felt the need to to call him names felt the need to push the boundaries constantly um i you know claude had to go from aftv after what happened um you know when he was found to have made a comment that was that was inappropriate those who know claude know he's not a racist um know he's not anything like that but unfortunately if you put people who are not broadcasters on live camera live tv live videos that kind of thing was bound to happen it was a time bomb waiting to happen and that's where i think and again that hindsight is a wonderful thing so i'm not going to sit here and say it was definitely wrong it was definitely this and i know AFTV have had a lot of success with their watch alongs but i do think that when you put people on live broadcasts who are not broadcasters there is a risk of that happening. And so I, I don't blame AFTV and I don't, look, I, I, from what Robbie says, he did support Claude after, and I'm sure that's true. Um, I know other people uh, close to me that were closer to Claude and, and I know that they were constantly talking to him and they were constantly there for him. But so, you know, I'm not going to say that AFTV didn't, didn't support him or anything like that. That would be wrong. And, and I'd be saying that on the basis of nothing, I'd be just making a stupid accusation. So I'm not going to do that. 
Um, I don't think that's fair, but I, I think that what happened with that watch along really impacted Claude. I noticed the difference in him after that. And I think that that was, um, like I say, I think that was an accident waiting to happen because of what I said. You know, you, you put somebody who's not a broadcaster um, in a situation like that. Um, the comment was completely unacceptable. There's no getting away from that. I'm not for a second suggesting that it wasn't. Um, but what I will say is I know that he was not a racist. And so, yeah, um, it, it, it was a calamity waiting to happen. It happened and I think it had a really negative impact on him. Um, let's see, uh, what else you guys are saying in the live chat. Um, I know it, I know I haven't spent as much time talking about the David Rowe castle thing. Um, and I know some people will probably be annoyed about that, be a bit disappointed by that. And for me, as I said, right at the top of the show, that's because, uh, David Rowe castle was, was before my time. But there is a fantastic article on The Athletic today by Amy Lawrence uh, talking about David Rocastle. And if you're someone like myself who doesn't remember him, if you're someone like myself who um, remembers his passing but doesn't remember his time at Arsenal, I would strongly advise you to check that piece out. It's a fantastic piece. Um, and I'd definitely, uh, watch, uh, I'd definitely have a read if I was you. Um, but I'm not going to sit here on the podcast and basically read out the piece to you. But Amy's obviously a fantastic journalist and she's uh, much better positioned to talk about David Rocastle, the impact he had at Arsenal um, and, and what kind of man he was than me. So um, I will check that out. And there's a great tribute uh, with involving Ian Wright and Bakayo Saka at the club of Jair today as well. So um, check it out. Uh, Mikey B 400, Omri and Claude, etc. signals the fact that we are at a crossroads with social media. Really good point. Thierry Omri, of course, quitting social media uh, earlier this week as well, said that when they start coming down as hard on, on hate speech and, and racism and abuse as they do on other issues like copyright, for example, the one I mentioned, then, um, then uh, he will return. But for now, he's not interested and you can't really blame him. I think, I mean, for me, social media has just got bigger and the, the animal has evolved and changed and developed and become bigger. And that means that the policing around it needs to be increased, right? If you've got a town with a hundred people in it, you might get away with having one policeman. But then if you're talking about a city like London, how could you um, police it? with one policeman you couldn't you, you the more users there are the more popular it becomes then the more you need to increase the measures uh, I I increase the the policing of it i guess is the right word and and that needs to happen and i think that social media has blown up so much over the last 10 years or so it's got to a point now where just allowing anybody to say anything without any ID, without any accountability, is just not on anymore. And um, yeah, uh, I think um, I think that's that's where we're at. Um, Jonathan Porter says uh, there are so many grey areas. People are accused of being snowflakes if they question things. I think a campaign between top YouTubers and players are needed. Imagine Jacka and Robbie together. That's the thing, though, isn't it? Like everybody needs to come together. But Granite Xhaka probably looks like looks at the, some of the big Arsenal platforms and feels that they are the root of the the abuse that he gets, and probably feels like he can't. And and that's the problem, isn't it? It's it's so fractured because people who have been on the end of it absolutely hate it. Some people look at it and go, "So what? It's just online. Ignore it." Um, and I've learned to do that over time. I do ignore it now. Um, but it took me a while to get there, to get to the point where I could read vile, disgusting things about me, about my son, about whatever, and, and just be able to just be like, you know what, <laughs> you're an absolute arsehole and I don't want anything to do with you. And I'm not going to risk all the work I've done over the last few years to get to where I am now for you to just, just to respond back to you. Um, and, and it's not easy to get to that point. And if I found it hard to get to that point without the fame that Claude had, without the fame that some of the others have, then, you know, you can only imagine how difficult it is for them. 
Um, Power Spin says anyone who's using Claws Def as a way to hate on AT AFTV is disgusting. Completely agree. Completely agree. Um, Inti and Anne says, uh, rest in peace, Claude, the voice of facts. Um, there's a couple of other uh, comments I wanted to pick up. This one comes from uh, Adam. He says, hi, Harry. Hope you're well. Sad news about Claude. I feel disgusted by how people are treated. Social media companies aren't responsible for free speech. I just hope that some positives come from this. Um, the Red Cannon says, uh, education, education. YouTube creators learn on the fly. There is no course you can go on. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Sam puts a quote out from Noel Gallagher. He says, Twitter is the playground for idiots. Couldn't agree more. Um, Junior Gunner says, I hope the, the guy who tweeted Claude about his channel and analysis sleeps well and feels culpable for spreading unprovoked hate. Yeah, there was obviously, you know, a tweet that was, being shared around yesterday um where claude kind of hinted that he was you know at that point and feeling like that and for me you know that one person that done it was probably the thousandth person to do it so you know whilst this completely fucking bang out of order you can't pin it on that one person this is you know claude's depression as a consequence of um online abuse and it you know there might have been other things as well you know that we don't know about and i'm not i'm not discounting those but the online abuse does take its toll and those people who do it are all equally responsible right you can't just look at one and say that was the final tweet and that person is the one there they're an absolute prick and it was completely unnecessary and and completely damaging and really damaging but there was millions hundreds thousands whatever that did it before him and that will continue to do it after him to other people and that is why this problem is so big right now we're not talking about five or six absolute idiots um you know or individuals who you can look at and go well it's only them it's not a systemic problem it's only them it's the culture today it's the culture today people being brought up now who don't know anything before social media, who don't know how to sit in a room and have a conversation with someone, who don't know how to uh, meet people um, face to face, but feel this bravery that they would never show on the streets um, when they're sitting behind their keyboard. It's a, it's a cultural issue that we've got now, not just here in England, it's everywhere. Um, it's all over the world right now. And, and that is why I keep talking about the need to police it better. Sam says it seemed like Claude was really missing the routine of going to watch the Arsenal every week. Yeah, um, he spoke about that as well. And um, I think it's right. Uh, Raphael says it was nice to see people talk about mental health. I hope that all of them will keep it up for longer than a day. Most will probably go back to being abusive. Yeah, it's sad. Um, but it is good to have the conversation. It is good to get it out there. And for all these arseholes, there are a lot of people that are doing really good work around it as well. Um, and listen, if you if you see abusive toxic characters get them off your timeline get them off your timeline if you see someone being abused if you see a comment that you think is completely out of order then then pull them up on it you know pull it up pull them up a lot of people will do something until they're pulled up on it the minute they're pulled up on it their outlook changes and that outlook can go you know that that attitude or that shift in mentality can go one of two ways either they respond again and they show what an actual prick they are and you realize that they're not worth the time or they'll step back and think twice about their actions. When I was a kid, I'm sure I said some stuff to people um, that was was taken in a bad way. I'm sure um, I said some things that upset people and you, you, you look back on it now and obviously you regret it and you, you wish you didn't, but you know, you can't go back and change what you've already done, but you can learn from it. And that is the most important thing here. And these people clearly don't learn from it because they pop up again and and they do it again and they do it to somebody else. And, and it's just, it's horrible. Um, it's a horrible sort of place to be in at the moment. But, you know, I wanted to pay tribute to both today. I wanted to pay tribute to, to Rocky Rowcastle 
there's not really any more superlatives to say about him. Um, did it last year, did it the year before, and we'll do it next year again as well because he is that much of a hero in these parts and um, deserves respect. So rest in peace, Rocky Rowcastle. Thoughts are with his family today. It must be a difficult uh, day for them. And of course, rest in peace, Claude, and, and thoughts are with his family as well, um, who will still be in shock. And of course, his friends too. Um, and he'll be sorely, sorely missed. And um, as I said before, might have disagreed with some of his appointments, uh, opinions, I mean, at times. Um, but you cannot deny he genuinely loved the football club. And all the times I met him and the times I worked with him, he was an absolute pleasure to work with. And when I heard the news, I was really, really sad. So, um, yeah, uh, rest in peace, Claude. And um, the abusers can't get you no more, my friend. So um going to leave it there. Going to leave it there. Uh, a big thank you to uh, Graham Usher as well, who's uh, just signed up to become a member of the channel. Thank you so much, mate, uh, for your continued support. If you're a gold member or above, our next bit of membership content lands tomorrow. Um, so keep your eyes uh, peeled for that. Our interview uh, with Kevin Campbell, Mike Stavrou's interview, part of a new brand new series that we're doing Um drops later today it goes live at 4 15 p.m on youtube and it will be available on audio from the next morning uh, we were going to release that yesterday it was on the calendar for yesterday which is why there was no content yesterday i didn't think um after hearing the news about claude it was appropriate uh, to put it out i felt that we should leave it and we should leave today um you know to for people to to kind of reflect on what happened because nobody wants to hear um, about where we are as a team, about the progress under Mikel Arteta. Um, all those things are obviously important to us as fans, but not at a time like yesterday. Um, so I spoke to Mike as well and, and we agreed that it would be better uh, to hold it back. And so you can uh, access that. It will be premiering at 4.15 p.m. UK time. And it will be available on podcast uh, format from the morning. So check that out. Let us know what you think about it. It's a series that Mike's putting together off his own back. So a massive thank you to Mike for that. Um, and delighted to, to be able to provide him with a platform uh, to share it with all of you. Thank you to everybody for joining me in the live chat. Thank you all uh, for your comments and interaction as always. A little bit of a different podcast today, but one that I feel needed to be done. Um, Anybody's got any issues, anybody feels down about it, anybody been on the subject, uh, it been the subject of online abuse, anybody need to talk about it, you know where I am. Uh, the Chronicles of Aguna is, uh, is, is becoming a bigger and bigger one uh, with each passing week, but it's a family. So uh, I want to thank you all for your continued support. And you're all, um, you know, you're all welcome to drop me a DM at any point um, if you ever need to talk about anything or or feel like you want to just get something off your chest. So um, if you are a member already and you haven't accessed our Discord server, make sure you do that because there's a lot of you that haven't. It's not compulsory, of course, but it is something that you get as part of your membership. Uh, so if you wish to use it, you can. And there's a great group in there, people supporting each other all the time, having great constructive conversations. I love it. Um, and uh, yeah, we'd love to have more of you on board, of course. We'll be back very, very soon with more. As I say, we'll have another episode dropping a little bit later on today, and then we'll be back again tomorrow. So until then, take care and um, stay safe. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon.